In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can make our application run on different screen sizes. In our example here, when we open it in tablet, like we can see, we have the list of albums on the left side, and when we select an album, we have it on the right side. And when we go back to a normal device, for example, we can see that we have a first screen, which is holding our albums, and when we select it, we're redirected to another screen. So how we do that? First, let me say that everything is in the description, the full project, so you can just get the code from there and use it and check it out yourself. And now what we have here is when we go to the theme uh, and go to the top albums theme object, usually here is where we set our typography and colors. But we are going to be adding one more variable, which this is only a global variable, even if you don't have this object in your project, it will be just a global variable that we need, which will be checking if it's a large screen or not a large screen. Large screen. So in our case, I have named it just a single to check if the content should be displayed in a single screen or not. And this is just equal to a local layout type, which we'll be getting from um, a bit below. When we scroll down a bit, we can see how we're setting up this variable and we're just checking if the screen width is less than 600 density pixels, then it should be single. And if it's not, it's not single. Now, one more important thing that I'm doing here is not only we're setting up a variable, but we would like in our case just to lock the device in. For example, if we're using tablet, we would like always to be locked in landscape mode. We don't want it when the device is rotated to be locked back in portrait. So that's why we have another check here, which is again, we're checking if it's less than 600 density pixels and we're running then this function, which is lock screen orientation. And we're setting it as a portrait. And if not, we're setting it as landscape. When we check what's happening inside it, we can just see that we're using this possible effect. And what this is doing is we're just saying whenever we quit the application, we would like the device to be not locked anymore. So if we are using the device, if we check the tablet version here, if we're, for example, rotating it like this, and when we're not anymore in the application, we would like to be returned in portrait. And when we go back in, I mean, we're just landscaping. But of course, this can be whatever your case is. But in this scenario, I'm just showing how we can do it this way. Next, let's go to the main activity where we're initializing our content and the whole application. So as we can see here, we have this variable we just created, which is is single. And we're using it, of course, to check if the page should be only a single page or we should be splitting the screen. So in our case, when we have a single page, we would like to be using the Jetpack navigation. But if we check the else statement, we don't have it anymore. And that's because we have only application with two screens in total. Now, if you're using a larger application, of course, you can just keep using the Jetpack navigation library. And the screen that we have here probably will be in one of, of your navigation graphs. But in our case, just this is simpler and easier to look at. How this works is very simple. As we can see inside of it, we just have a row. And this is how we're just splitting the screen on two. And on the left side, we'll be having our list screen and on the right side, we'll be having our single screen. Now I've put it in lazy column just because our design is a bit larger than uh, the whole height of the screen. And that's why if it just goes beyond that, we would like to be scrollable. And that's why it's in lazy column. Something to note here is that for example, if you're using some sort of foldable devices, which are the newer ones, um, you might want to create some sort of gap between those two screens with just, with just some spacing and that's it. But that's really dependent on what your targeted, you know, devices are or how you want to handle your screens. So yeah, I haven't done it, but it's just a simple spacing. That's all. Another thing that's very important here is that we have information that's being passed between the both screens. So this is when we click on one album, we would like to load it on the right screen. And when we're on the single device, we'll just want to pass it to the next screen. 
and usually you can do it with uh, jetpack navigation but because we've changed that and we're only using the navigation for the first part i would like to show you the way i do it over here and that's by just adding a data store in our project and this is just shared preferences if you've used it before but just the new version so you can see how i've set it up we have just this data store manager class and inside of it if we have any variables that we want to be stored or just settings or whatever it is in the data store it's going to be over here and the cool thing about it is that it's using flow so we can seamlessly just when we are inserting a variable we can always just look at you know if there are any changes to our album id and if there are you know we're just going to be outputting them and let's see how this actually works so when we go to our album list for example which imagine that we're on this screen and we want to click on something and we have this on click event again this is in the project and the on click event is just we cl click on a certain album and then this is being triggered so when we go into this um, case on album click instead of it what we see here is we have injected the data store manager and then we're just setting the album id when we go to our album single page view model we can see that in our init we are actually collecting the get album id values so every time we're actually clicking on something selecting an album we're collecting it over here when the album is being collected then we're doing you know whatever it is just getting the data and then displaying it on the screen so that's how this works in the same case is when we're using smaller device we just click on something and then we're displaying it based on the get album id value another thing that we can see here is we have this even in this screen it's not that visible but we have this back arrow when we're in the single uh in the portrait mode but when we go to the actual uh landscape mode we don't have it and that's because we don't need it in our case like i said it's just two screens and in the landscape mode it's just a single screen of application so how we do that is again if we go to the single component we can see that we have our single variable here so that's the cool part because we have we are initializing our variable to be a global in our project and that's why we can use it everywhere so if we have something that want to be different maybe in different parts of the application depending on if we're landscape or portrait well, we can do it just by checking with our a single variable and this is how you can just split your application into different screen sizes of course like i mentioned it's very different to what your needs are and that's why like i said you might be just be having navigation in your full application because this is usually the correct way of doing it but in our case we have it only in the single app like i said just because we're using a two-screen application in total so we don't need that when we have the tablet landscape mode i hope this tutorial was helpful and if it was please leave a like and subscribe for more